pointer. Uh, so, uh, this lecture will be about uh, transformers. Uh, in the last lecture, last week, uh, we've been talking about uh, the transformer uh, and uh, about the equivalent circuit diagram. And uh, now, uh, today, we'll be talking about uh, applications and uh, also about some special transformers. Uh, before we do this, uh, let me summarize uh, the equivalent circuit diagram from last week and uh, explain again uh, how is it working and uh, why do we use it. The reason is simple. Uh, we will see the equivalent circuit diagram again uh, many times uh, when we will be talking in that about induction motors. So uh, I find that this is a quite important topic because uh, you will basically learn uh, two machines uh, at the price of one circuit diagram. Uh, so first of all, uh, what is the purpose of uh, the equivalent circuit diagram? Uh, the purpose is uh, that we are looking for a model that uh, will help us to as estimate the properties of a real transformer uh, based on a few simple measurements that we can actually do in the circuit. And uh, let me stress out that uh, the circuit diagram uh, does not represent the internal functionality of the transformer. So in other words, if you take uh, the components you see uh, in the equivalent circuit diagram, uh, it may not necessarily give you a transformer. So this is really a model that helps us to understand the mathematically and uh, schematically uh, the properties. Uh, we've seen that the equivalent circuit diagram has uh, at least three components. Uh, one component uh, shown here in the middle in yellow is uh, the magnetizing circuit. And uh, this is a model that represents us how uh, we are creating the magnetic flux in the transformer. That's uh, the inductor here shown as uh, X0. is the main magnetizing flux. And uh, the resistor R0 uh, is a model that represents us losses in uh, the iron of uh, the transformer. So uh, here this represents the, the R0 represents the losses uh, in the magnetic circuit. Uh, then uh, we have a component uh, shown here as X1 and R1. Uh, this is the model for the primary winding uh, where R1 represents uh, the resistance of the winding and uh, X1 uh, represents the stray magnetic flux. Uh, and uh, the stray magnetic flux is uh, the magnetic flux that is not flowing through the core, so it's not flowing through the main magnetic circuit. So we can say that uh, the stray magnetic flux is uh, a loss uh, that uh, we are accounting for. And uh, a similar uh, schematic circuit is here uh, representing the stator winding. So we can see R2 prime and X2 prime. Uh, the prime is telling us that this is not directly the value of uh, the resistance or reactance for the stator winding, but uh, it is being recalculated uh, through the uh, voltage transfer ratio uh, P uh, of the transformer. So for the secondary winding, uh, we have those equations that apply, and uh, the secondary voltage here, V2 prime, is uh, the voltage that's recalculated to the primary side and uh, the P is uh, the uh, voltage transfer ratio. So it's uh, for an ideal transformer, it's uh, the ratio between the number of turns. Uh, here, the symbol shown in red, that's uh, an ideal transformer uh, without analysis. And uh, uh, this represents us how the voltage is recalculated from the primary side uh, to the secondary side. So the secondary side is here V2 and all this is uh, the primary side.
uh, this circuit, uh, as I've already said many times, is uh, a model of the circuit. Uh, we can represent it with uh, circuit equations. So uh, we can uh, write equations for nodes and meshes in uh, this circuit and uh, by solving the circuit equations uh, we are able to get uh, currents and voltages in the circuit. So for example if we are looking for the current I0 that here we have uh, in uh, the schematic uh, we can uh, solve the circuit, uh, we can calculate the voltage that is uh, at this node and uh, when we know that this voltage uh, then uh, voltage uh, divided by uh, reactance will give us uh, the current flowing uh, through the main inductor which is shown uh, as uh, I mu or if we are interested in losses uh, in the magnetic circuit uh, we take the voltage in this node and uh, we divide it by uh, resistance R0 which is uh, the, the iron resistance. So uh, circuit equations in this AC circuit uh, can help us to calculate what are the voltages and currents in the circuit. Uh, now uh, what is it good for? Uh, using the equivalent circuit diagram uh, we can uh, calculate the behavior of the transformer and uh, that will be the same also for an induction motor and uh, we can uh, calculate uh, things like losses, uh, efficiency, eventually voltage drops that uh, we have in the circuit. And in order to do this uh, we require only few parameters uh, we require the inductances, inductances and resistances in the circuit and that's, uh, that's basically all that we, that we need. So it's very simple to uh, get those numbers from measurements and uh, you will uh, do this on the lab class as well. Uh, there is an online model that uh, you can launch and uh, this online model is going to this schematic and this schematic is nothing else then uh, the equivalent circuit diagram of a transformer. Uh, there is one uh, difference and that uh, here uh, we have a load impedance and this load impedance represents us uh, the load that is taking the current from the circuit. So uh, in this uh, online model there is no ideal transformer but all the values are already recalculated uh, to the primary side. So uh, here uh, this uh, transformer is uh, removed and uh, here instead of it uh, we have a load that represents the load uh, that's connected to the transformer. Uh, the load that you have on the transformer could be for example a rectifier, uh, could be a power supply, could be whatever you imagine as a load. Uh, in my circuit here I have used only a load impedance like a load resistor. Uh, I have chosen just 100 ohms and the online model uh, can help you to understand the behavior of uh, the transformer when you are changing some parameters. Uh, so take a look on the online model and uh, learn how the properties of the transformer are influenced by that. Uh, now to give you an idea about uh, the ratios between the values in the circuit uh, let's take a look on this estimate uh, that is valid for energy transformers so we're talking about large transformers for power networks and uh, here we can see what is approximately the ratio between different uh, values uh, so uh, we can see that uh, the uh, resistance of the primary and secondary winding that's the R1 and R2 prime here that's about the same of course it depends on the type of transformer it depends on the voltages and currents and so on but approximately it is the same value uh, this value is typically very small because uh, the transformer is made from thick wires in order to support large currents so here uh, we have uh, relatively small resistance.
uh, all the values are in ohms uh, because uh, resistance here uh, that's in ohms uh, is uh, reactant that's ohm well and uh, R F uh, is uh, the value here uh, that we can see uh, in, the, in the circuit. Uh, the other values like x1 and x2 prime, uh, this is uh, the reactance here of the uh, primary winding and of the secondary winding that you can see here in the circuit. Uh, and this represents the stray magnetic flux. So uh, it helps us to model the, the losses in the transformer. Uh, X1H is the reactance of uh, the part of the circuit that creates uh, the magnetic flux and uh, you can see that compared to the other values it's about 1500 times larger so uh, the transformer acts primarily like an inductor and uh, only a very small part of the circuit uh, is uh, the actual resistance uh, the last value is RFE. This is the resistance of the magnetic circuit. So that's uh, here in this uh, in this part of the equivalent circuit diagram, and uh, this represents us uh, the losses that we have in the magnetic circuit. You can note that uh, here this value is fairly large to the values of uh, R2 and R1. Um, but uh, since the current that is flowing in this part of the circuit is small, uh, we will have uh, relatively small losses. Uh, and uh, this will yield us a very high efficiency. So although uh, this uh, RFE is a very large value in ohms, then uh, the current is small and uh, we know that the power on the resistor is uh, R times I squared. So we have a very small value of I uh, compared to the current that is actually flowing in the primary and in the secondary winding. So uh, the, there is a very large uh, difference in currents uh, in the circuit. And uh, here in this part of the circuit, only a very small current is flowing. And uh, here we have a very large current compared to, uh, to the part here in the magnetizing circuit. Uh, let's see how uh, we can obtain the parameters and again uh, I discussed that last week but uh, uh, since you will do this experiment in the lab uh, at least for the transformers and uh, also for induction motors I find it important to repeat that uh, so there are basically three steps how we can obtain uh, the parameters the first step is uh, that uh, we measure the resistance R1 and R2. This is uh, the resistance of the primary and of the secondary winding. And uh, we can use it, we can measure it by Ohm's method. So we uh, push some current through the circuit and we measure the current and we measure the voltage. So this is a very simple measurement uh, with uh, a power supply, with a voltmeter and with, with an ampermeter. Uh, now we will not uh, do the measurements of L1 and L2 uh, in, the, in the lab, but uh, it's not again that difficult. Uh, it is basically done by uh, using a transient response. Uh, so you make a step change of uh, the current in the circuit and you are watching what is the exponential response of the winding and uh, this can give you the idea about the inductance so this is done using a, an oscilloscope and uh, from this measurement uh, you will get the value of L, L1 and L2 uh, the P is the voltage transfer ratio and uh, it's uh, measured very easily uh, with an unloaded transformer uh, you measure the primary voltage and the secondary voltage and uh, the ratio is uh, the voltage transfer ratio. Uh, in order to obtain the parameters uh, of the equivalent circuit diagram, uh, we can do uh, the open circuit test. And the open circuit test uh, will give you approximately uh, the iron losses. Uh, it's approximately because uh, there is another 
part of the losses that uh, is hidden in this no load loss and uh, that's uh, the part that actually happens here in this primary winding. Uh, the way this works is that uh, we have an unloaded transformer. So here uh, there is no load connected to the transformer. You have open terminals and since there is no load and this part of the circuit is, o is open uh, then there is no current that flows through this part of the circuit. So uh, there is no current in R2 or L2. Uh, this means that all the current that uh, we measure in the circuit has to flow through the primary winding and has to be used uh, here in this uh, magnetizing circuit. So some part of it flows through the magnetizing inductance here L0 and some part of it shows uh, flows to the uh, iron to, to this resistor that represents the iron losses. And uh, we measure this uh, current and we measure the power uh, that is taken by the transformer. And we basically get uh, a component of the losses uh, that we will call delta P0. And that's uh, the part of the losses uh, that does not uh, depend on the load. So it's a, a constant value and it is telling us uh, what is the uh, power that is lost in uh, the transformer on the primary side here. Uh, since uh, uh, most of the current flows uh, through this uh, part of the circuit, through the RFE resistor, then uh, this represents approximately the iron losses. But I'm saying approximately because again, uh, there is a part of losses that's here on RFE. And there is another part of losses here uh, on uh, the resistor R1. But uh, as you note, the values here, here R1, in my example, we have uh, 1 ohm, and here in my example, we have 170 kilo ohms. So uh, this is uh, many times larger than the value of R1, and uh, hence uh, the, the majority of the losses is really happening on the RFE resistor. Uh, the third test is uh, the so-called short circuit test. And in this short circuit test, uh, we will get uh, part of the losses that are dependent on the load. So here uh, we have a load impedance uh, and uh, we use the load impedance with uh, a value that uh, can give us uh, a high current in the circuit. So uh, typically it's done in such a way that uh, we power it with a small voltage here this is a small voltage, few volts typically. And uh, here the slot impedance is uh, very small. Typically it's shorting out here this uh, secondary winding. And uh, we adjust the input voltage to a value where the current flowing through this circuit is equal to the nominal current. So in this case, uh, we do not overload the transformer uh, we're using nominal current, but uh, here we have a, some very small voltage. This small voltage is usually few percent of uh, the full nominal voltage. And uh, this short circuit test assumes that uh, the current that flows uh, through the primary and secondary winding is going uh, like shown here in this picture. So through the primary winding, secondary winding, load and back. And uh, this uh, current is uh, much larger than uh, the current that is going in the magnetizing circuit. Note here the impedances here. Uh, here we have uh, 170 kilo ohms. Here it is just one ohm and one ohm over there and uh, 100 ohms over, over here. So uh, we have uh, 102 ohms here in this circuit and uh, we have 170 kilo ohms here. So this current is very small and this current is very large. So therefore we can neglect the current that's going through this magnetizing circuit and uh, we can say that uh, almost all the current is now flowing in the primary and the secondary winding. So uh, this is zero and we get uh, the losses 
here in the primary winding and in the secondary winding and of course the losses in the load. So this part of the losses that we'll call delta PK uh, will be dependent on load. Uh, here the losses in this circuit um, again are proportional to R times I squared. So if we are changing the current then the, this loss will uh, be a function of, the, of those uh, currents. Uh, in order to compare uh, different transformers, uh, we will uh, use uh, so-called per unit values. And uh, those per unit values help us to compare different transformers. So even though the transformer may have uh, different uh, voltages, uh, may have uh, different powers and so on, uh, we can uh, still compare the transformers and uh, we can, for example, say uh, how is the efficiency changing if we are loading the transformer. Uh, there will be a difference if it's a small transformer or if it's a large transformer, for example, in efficiency. Uh, here is an example uh, how we can create those per unit values. So for example, if we are using transformer impedance, then it's a voltage uh, divided by the current. Uh, there is an error here, it should not be V squared, it should be just V over, over I. So it's a ratio of, uh, of the voltage over current. Uh, a very similar thing here is uh, per unit, unit impedance. Uh, here you can see this is uh, the Z1K is the short circuit impedance. And uh, Z1N is uh, the nominal impedance of the transformer as uh, calculated by this previous equation. And uh, you will get this value from a lab experiment, we'll call it VK. And uh, it's basically a ratio uh, between the voltages here uh, that we use for the short circuit test, that's V1K, and uh, the nominal voltage of the transformer that's uh, shown on the tech, on the nameplate of the transformer. And uh, this is the nominal voltage. Uh, typically, the value of uh, VK is a um, few percent of the nominal voltage so let's say between five and ten percent of the nominal voltage so in other words uh, the value here vk is telling you what voltage uh, you should uh, use uh, here on the power supply in the short circuit test so remember that the short circuit test is not using the full voltage but uh, it's using a smaller voltage uh, the reason why we do not use the full voltage is obvious. If we make a short connection uh, on a transformer, then uh, here the current flowing through the circuit would be very large and uh, we would destroy the transformer. So uh, for this reason, this voltage again is uh, just a small fraction of the full voltage. So the usual procedure is that uh, you have uh, the variable voltage supply and uh, you're increasing the voltage from zero all the way to the desired current the nominal current and then you know you read the, the voltage that you have in the circuit uh, we can use the uh, similar approach also for the load and we can uh, write the per unit load as you see here in this uh, formula so this is the per unit load and it's a ratio between the actual current to the nominal current. So if you load the transformer with uh, nominal current, then the per unit load is one because uh, I is equal to I N. Uh, the same for uh, real power or apparent power. Again, if uh, the per unit load is, uh, is one, then uh, you're loading it with the same apparent power as uh, it's the nominal power here. Uh, note that here in this equation the cosine phi 2 that is the power factor but not the power factor of the transformer but uh, is the power factor of uh, the load. So uh, the power factor of the actual connection in the transformer is influenced by the load. Uh, when you have uh, an unloaded transformer 
so uh, when uh, we are talking about uh, this kind of circuit then here we don't have the load impedance and uh, the only part that is here in the circuit is uh, the inductor basically so here we have the main magnetizing circuit and here we have the stray magnetic flux but uh, an unloaded transformer uh, will act as an inductor so the power factor of a unloaded transformer is uh, the power factor of an inductor so it's a, an almost ideal inductor well not entirely but almost ideal because here we can see that the inductance here uh, is much larger than the resistance here in the circuit and uh, the unloaded transformer acts as an inductor and uh, we can plot for example the phase uh, phaser diagram uh, where in the ideal inductor we have uh, voltage first and then current and the, the phase shift is almost 90 degrees uh, then uh, if we have those two parameters uh, if we have delta p0 and delta pk uh, we can calculate the losses uh, in the transformer uh, note here that uh, delta p0 is not a function of load so this is a constant value and uh, delta pk is a function of load and here this is uh, the per unit load so uh, if uh, we have nominal load, then uh, this um, power per, per unit load is 1 and we have some losses uh, that uh, can tell us uh, what is the efficiency of the transformer. Uh, the efficiency is defined as a ratio of um, input power, uh, sorry, output power versus uh, input power here. So P, that's the output power and delta P, that's the losses. And uh, if you substitute in this equation, you can see that uh, it is a function of per unit load here. Uh, it is a function of uh, the nominal uh, apparent power that we have in the transformer, that's here as n. And uh, it is a function of uh, the power factor of the load. So in this case, uh, we can see that uh, the efficiency of the transformer is not dependent only on uh, the transformer parameters but uh, it is dependent only on also on the load so uh, it will be different if you use it uh, with different loads that have different power factors uh, here this is a constant value that depends on the construction of the transformer in and here delta pk again that's the short circuit losses times uh, this is the per unit load squared so this helps us to calculate the efficiency. Uh, the efficiency of a transformer is very large and uh, as can be seen here in this equation. Uh, it is actually a function of uh, the apparent power. So if this is a larger value, then uh, the efficiency of the transformer will increase. Uh, the typical efficiency of very large transformers is um, about 99%. Uh, by very large transformers, here I mean uh, transformers uh, with uh, something like 40 mega volt amperes. Uh, small transformers, let's say 10 kilovolt amperes, uh, will have smaller efficiency, around 93%. And then uh, the efficiency is dropping more and more. So small transformers that you may find in home appliances uh, with uh, 50 or let's say 100 watts uh, they may have efficiency of something like 80-85% uh, you can see a few examples of those transformers so this is an example of a, a small uh, transformer uh, that you may find in some home appliances uh, this transformer uh, actually has uh, multiple windings uh, you can see here those uh, wires are for primary winding and uh, if you can see here in the table uh, we can find out what is the power and voltage uh, so for example here this red winding uh, they say 8 watts and uh, I believe 16 volts and the other windings uh, will have uh, different powers and different voltages so 
transformer uh, has uh, at least uh, uh, the you know, two windings uh, the you know, primary winding and secondary winding but uh, here you can s uh, see a transformer with multiple windings now I have a question uh, what is the best way to increase the efficiency of a small transformer uh, it is uh, to use different materials for the core so uh, instead of uh, uh, silicon steel uh, you could use uh, some more say, exotic materials like uh, nanocrystalline materials and so on and uh, in this way you can uh, increase uh, you can decrease the losses and increase the efficiency uh, second possibility uh, would be to use a different material uh, than copper because uh, one of the parts for the losses is uh, the uh, jowl losses in the winding and uh, then you could use uh, a material that has better conductivity uh, but in both cases uh, the problem is price you could use of course for example silver or gold as a better conductor uh, or you could use the, the nanocrystalline materials but uh, in this case uh, the transformer would be very very expensive so uh, always it's a trade-off uh, between efficiency and price so i hope that has answered the question of uh, Suyash about the transformers uh, then let's see uh, the pictures here that we have um, on the left this is an example of uh, a larger transformer that is actually used in uh, power networks, in, in power grids. And uh, those transformers, uh, they have a quite large efficiency. Uh, in fact, uh, the transformer has the largest efficiency of all electric machines. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, all other electric machines, such as motors, have uh, similar losses, similar source of losses but uh, they have also mechanic losses because there there are rotating parts but uh, a transformer you have just uh, the losses in the copper and uh, in the iron and there are no mechanical losses so uh, here uh, we can achieve quite high efficiencies uh, anyway uh, larger transformers might might need cooling uh, that's the the reason why uh, those boxes here they have so many fins in here uh, and uh, we may have either uh, natural convection cooling or uh, it may be forced uh, with a, with a fan for example uh, if we are talking about large transformers so let's say this larger transformer 10 kilovolt ampere and uh, if we assume that uh, this would be equivalent to 10 kilowatts, uh, which is not, but it, that depends on the type of load, uh, we have 7% losses. And 7% uh, losses uh, of 10,000, that's, uh, that's about uh, it's 70, uh, 70 watts. Uh, and uh, then uh, this might need some cooling. Uh, so uh, it that actually depends on uh, the type of application, but usually uh, the way it's done is that the transformer is submerged in uh, an oil bath and uh, we uh, cool this oil and this, this uh, is also used to prevent uh, from uh, moisture. Uh, here you see such an example of a large uh, power transformer and uh, this uh, uh, is how it's mounted so it's a three-phase transformer uh, and in this case in most cases it's uh, well, at least in this case on this picture it's uh, cooled by natural cooling so there is no fan uh, due to reliability reasons so uh, no fan it's uh, cooled by natural convection uh, let's take a look now uh, how do we build a transformer uh, so uh, in order to decrease the losses and uh, increase the efficiency of the transformer uh, we need to make the core from laminated steel so it's not a single piece of uh, iron but uh, it has sheets 
and uh, those sheets are made from electrical steel. Uh, we've discussed that uh, about two weeks ago. Electrical steel is an alloy of uh, iron and silicon, where the silicon has about 7%, plus other elements. And uh, the reason to, for using this alloy is uh, to decrease the eddy current losses that we have in the circuit. So this is how this uh, circuit looks like. Uh, those are the thin sheets and uh, this is laminated in a stack. Uh, I will show you at the end of this uh, presentation a video how this is actually produced. And uh, here uh, you can see that uh, may, we may have different shapes. Uh, one of the most common shapes is uh, this type of lamination. Uh, it's called uh, EI lamination because uh, one of the uh, shapes uh, is uh, like letter E and uh, here uh, it's letter I and the way it works is that uh, uh, you create the coil on a holder like this uh, in separately uh, from the circuit so you create the secondary and primary windings and uh, then uh, you need some way how you can mount this uh, in the core so here this core sits then on the middle uh, middle frame and uh, in order to have some access there uh, you need some way how to remove this part of the circuit so this is the case so where this I piece comes in play so uh, then the transformer looks like this when it's assembled and this is the E piece and this is the I piece. Now in order to uh, reduce the magnetic resistance of the magnetic circuit, uh, it is interleaved. So uh, uh, one part of the circuit, uh, well, one part of the lamination is uh, in this shape, EI. And then the, the next one uh, would be where the E is facing upwards and the I part is uh, here on top of it so this helps us to conduct the electric the magnetic current the magnetic flux uh, and uh, in order to uh, hold down the magnetic core you can see here those holes uh, those holes uh, are used to fix the laminations together uh, it's done uh, either with screws or uh, during the assembly you press it together uh, you uh, place it in a special lacquer, let's call it lacquer, and uh, then uh, this lacquer hardens uh, with high temperatures and low pressures, it uh, soaks into the material and uh, it bonds uh, this uh, core together. Uh, so there is a, uh, this is the magnetic circuit, uh, this is the coil with at least one secondary and one primary winding. Uh, and note uh, that uh, here we have uh, the individual sections of the laminations and uh, in order to prevent uh, the currents in the iron uh, each uh, section is individually insulated from the other section uh, either with lacquer in some cases with a thin paper or with the metal, metal oxide layer on top of it so uh, electrically uh, it's a very thin insulation uh, but this prevents us uh, eddy currents that can flow in the core now there are other uh, types of laminations that are a little bit less common uh, but you may still uh, find them so here uh, you can see the ee lamination both resemble a letter e uh, or this uh, LL uh, lamination but where you have two same sections but they are rotated by 180 degrees uh, or we can have this uh, UI lamination again it's uh, based on the letters uh, uh, where can you find transformers uh, so transformers are all around us uh, we can find them uh, in uh, power distribution networks so this is an example that you see here, a very large transformer, probably some tens of megavolt amperes. Uh, and here you can see uh, where it is used. So it's uh, going all the way from the power plants 
uh, the voltage is then stepped up to several hundreds of uh, kilovolts it's going to a power substation where again it might be transformed to a different voltage level and then it's uh, being distributed through a, a wiring system that uh, to households and here again there is a transformer that steps down uh, the voltage so uh, typically we might find those transformers in uh, power distribution networks uh, we may find of course transformers in uh, home appliances and uh, in this case uh, it's uh, a very small transformer on the other hand uh, you can see such an example in here so this is a small power supply uh, it takes in the voltage from the grid uh, it uh, is using a transformer to step down the voltage uh, to a suitable level and then uh, this circuit uh, here this circuit board that uh, you see over there uh, this is used uh, to rectify the voltage to smooth it out and uh, eventually to regulate the voltage to a suitable level. So for example, this might be a charger for a cell phone or for a computer. And uh, this is the typical block diagram of uh, such uh, a circuit. So here we have a transformer. It's taking us, uh, taking the 230 volt AC voltage. It's stepping it down to a suitable voltage uh, if here on the output we want uh, 5 volts DC then uh, this would be a little bit larger so let's say 8 maybe 9 volts approximately uh, then uh, we have a rectifier and this picture here it's shown as a full bridge rectifier so it's using uh, both halves of the sine voltage that we have available uh, the smoothing here, uh, this is uh, done with a smoothing capacitor, so that's here in this circuit. Typically it's a large electrolytic capacitor and uh, it acts like a filter. And the output voltage uh, is available on those terminals. Uh, here in this circuit we do not have any voltage regulator, but it might be there if you need a stable voltage for something. Uh, and uh, here in this chart you can see uh, the voltage waveform as uh, you would see that on the oscilloscope so uh, there is a ripple always and uh, if we need to remove the ripple uh, we can uh, add a voltage regulator that removes that it's an integrated circuit typically uh, we might also uh, use a larger capacitor here in this circuit but on the other hand, the larger capacitor will increase the size of the device. Uh, so uh, note that this is a small transformer. Uh, this might have something like maybe 30 watts, 30 volt amperes, approximately, maybe a little bit more. And uh, this will have a quite low efficiency. So uh, there are a few ways how we can increase the efficiency of this power supply. And uh, one way how this is done today is uh, that we are not using transformers for 50 Hz, but uh, we are using significantly larger frequencies. And uh, that's what you have in computer power supplies, uh, in chargers and so on. So then there is a, there is a transformer as well, but uh, it's uh, being designed for frequencies of a uh, few tens of kilohertz, maybe 100 kilohertz, maybe even larger frequencies and uh, this can increase us the efficiency it can decrease the size uh, but on the other hand we need to use different materials and it's more complicated in terms of uh, electrical connections so it's not just uh, this simple circuit where you have four diodes and the capacitor it's a uh, feedback system which usually uses uh, integrated circuits that are much more complicated than this but the gain is that we have uh, much larger efficiencies today. Uh, this is an example of uh, such uh, transformers used in switching power supplies. Uh, so let me uh, start here with this uh, power supply. Uh, this is a power supply that uh, we have all uh, in the PC. And uh, the main component of this uh, is a transformer, but it's a high frequency transformer. So it is shown here, it is not made from a silicon steel, 
but uh, this is using powder iron because of the losses again and uh, all this circuit that you can see around it is basically used to control the circuit and uh, to provide uh, protection against overcurrent uh, to uh, measure the current uh, protection against uh, high temperatures and so on and so on so you can see that uh, compared to this circuit where we had the transformer plus four diodes and a capacitor now this is uh, much more complicated uh, in principle uh, the circuit works like here it's shown in this picture uh, this is the transformer that we have this is this high frequency transformer this is my primary circuit and uh, this is my output voltage uh, in this voltage here in the VN voltage uh, that's uh, a voltage that is directly rectified from the power network so uh, we have uh, this rectifier that is directly connected to AC mains it is uh, rectifying this voltage and uh, the output of this, re this rectifier is a very large voltage it's uh, something like 325 volts DC so that's that's here the voltage that we have on the input uh, here uh, it is shown just a smoothing capacitor that you have there uh, that's uh, the capacitors that we see here in this part of the circuit they are for high voltage and uh, uh, this is a transistor and in this transistor uh, we use it as a switch so uh, we switch it with high frequencies uh, then we change the current I1 that's flowing through the circuit and this transformer is uh, transforming the voltage from this primary side to this secondary side and on the secondary side we have a rectifier in this case it's only a single diode and then this is the smoothing capacitor that uh, you have here and this is again smoothing out the circuit uh, this schematic is only showing the principle but uh, in reality uh, you need also to have some feedback here about the current and about the voltage so it is, it is equipped by voltage and current sensors or measurement and uh, then it is feeding back this current and voltage to the control system that is changing the signal that is going to this uh, to this gate of the transistor so it's a quite complicated circuit but on the other hand uh, since uh, it's working with high frequency the voltage here on the uh, the efficiency of the transformer is uh, much better than the normal transformers uh, for 50 hertz uh, the efficiency of this uh, switching power supplies might be something like 95-98% It's dependent on the frequency, it's dependent on the material, it's dependent on the load as well But uh, it is significantly higher than uh, normal power supplies uh, with transformers which, are, which have this transformer for 50 Hz So this uh, will give us uh, the same voltage but lower efficiency, lower, uh, higher losses compared to switching power supplies. So today uh, you can find uh, the power switching power supplies in PCs, uh, in chargers, basically everywhere uh, where we need high efficiency or where, where we want higher efficiency. Uh, in this picture on top uh, left uh, we can see an example of such a high frequency transformer. Uh, this transformer uh, that we see on the, pic on the screen is uh, equipped with multiple multiple secondary windings uh, because typically uh, this kind of power supply is supplying not a single voltage but more voltages so it's uh, something like 12 volts, 5 volts, uh, 1.8 volts and so on so uh, here we have the secondary windings and one of the terminal, well two of the terminals uh, will be this primary winding of the transformer and this primary winding is then power is empowered by directly by the rectified DC voltage 325 volts here uh, at this capacitor uh, so it's possible to recognize immediately that this is a transformer uh, for a switching power supply because uh, it is uh, looking in a different way you can see here 
it, this is a massive piece of iron uh, but in this case uh, this is a powder iron powder core or other similar materials and uh, the weight is much smaller so and the power density is much larger uh, here is an example uh, of a larger three-phase transformer uh, so here in this picture you can see how it looks like mm, again you can immediately see that this is a three-phase transformer uh, because here we have uh, the three uh, inductors on three three cores and uh, here you can see the schematic of how this is connected so uh, one of the windings uh, will be used as the primary winding uh, the second winding will be used as the secondary winding and uh, the ratio of the, the windings will give us uh, what is the step down or step down step up ratio of the currents so uh, here this uh, in this is again the magnetic circuit this is the core used um, to conduct magnetic flux this is made from um, silicon steel or other materials but typically silicon steel uh, because that's uh, sufficient and cheap enough compared to other materials such as uh, uh, powder iron or nanocrystalline cores uh, let's take a look on uh, how we can actually connect uh, the transformers together uh, in a three-phase transformer uh, we have uh, two ways how the windings may be connected uh, one way is uh, called a star connection and the other is called a delta connection uh, that's because uh, here we have uh, the shape of a star and here we have a shape of the letter delta uh, note that in the star connection all the three windings are connected together at a common point uh, this uh, can be the neutral point in, in this picture uh, it uh, depends then if uh, we need it or if we can connect it to the neutral point typically it's not available and here we have the three phase windings uh, the other possibility is uh, that we have the delta connection in here and in this delta connection you can note that uh, here uh, the th windings are connected always uh, at a common point but here in this common point for example we have winding A and winding B that is uh, connected together so this is only a connection of two points and then here uh, winding C and winding A again it has only one point uh, note that in the delta connection there is no neutral point so uh, we have only the phase lines here ABC but no neutral point is uh, available uh, we can see such an example in this schematic on top left and uh, here you have an example of a three phase transformer uh, that has a turns ratio 10 to 1 and uh, where the primary winding is uh, powered by the voltage here line to line equal to 100 volts so this is the line to line voltage uh, if we are talking about uh, the line to neutral voltage here it, this, uh, this is a star connection and in this star connection uh, we have uh, the uh, neutral wire available and uh, we know that uh, we can recalculate the line to line voltage uh, and to the neutral voltage by using the square root of 3 factor so here uh, we have a 57.7 volts uh, on all three windings uh, we are assuming a symmetrical power supply so all the voltages are the same and uh, here is the secondary winding and uh, since the turns ratio is 10 to 1 uh, we see that those voltages are divided by 10 uh, in this example uh, we see that uh, we have uh, the secondary winding connected also in the star connection but uh, this does not necessarily need to be the case uh, we may have uh, here also a delta connection 
The same could be true for the primary winding. Uh, for, for some applications, we actually connect the primary winding in delta and then the, uh, the, the secondary winding is connected uh, in a star connection. So this is used, for example, in power networks. We'll not go into details, but uh, it has some advantages. Uh, let's take a look on uh, uh, how uh, we can connect the transformers together. Uh, the reason for doing this uh, might be uh, the following. Uh, we can have an appliance uh, or let's say a factory for example that uh, will work with some high load and also with some low load. And uh, we have seen that the efficiency of the transformer depends on the load. It is very high when the transformer is loaded with uh, the nominal load. Uh, we can actually see that in, uh, the, in the equations. So if I go a little bit back uh, to this slide here, we see that uh, the efficiency is influenced by the load. And uh, if the transformer has a very small load, then uh, the efficiency will be very small as well. So there are applications where we are looking to improve the efficiency. And uh, we have basically one mode. The mode is that uh, we are taking the power at the nominal point uh, when this is a large load. And uh, the second option is that uh, we take only a light load and uh, we will use a second transformer. So uh, the parallel work of transformers is used in applications where uh, you are looking for higher efficiencies and uh, you have this problem. Either you're taking a lot of current or uh, low current, but in both cases you would like to have uh, higher efficiency. Uh, there are several conditions uh, that you need to maintain if uh, you want to connect the transformers in parallel. Uh, first of all, uh, you need to have the same input and output voltage. This is an obvious reason. Uh, we will connect the transformers in parallel and uh, if the voltage on the input and output is not the same, then uh, we may not connect those transformers together. Uh, it would be something like if you connect uh, a 12 volt battery in parallel to a 1.5 volt battery. So there will be very large currents and you would destroy uh, both power supplies. Uh, the output voltage uh, needs to have the same phase. Uh, we have seen in the equivalent circuit diagram that uh, there is a phase shift between the input and output voltage. And uh, also, if you look here in this schematic, then uh, this voltage on the output of the secondary winding uh, may have some phase shift uh, compared to the input. So if this phase shift is not the same, then again we would have very large currents that flow between uh, the windings. So for this reason we need to make sure that both transformers that work in parallel uh, have the same phase. And the last condition is uh, that the both transformers uh, need to have the same pair unit voltage. Uh, the per unit voltage is uh, basically telling us how the voltage is dropping on the transformer if uh, I'm changing the current. You can see it here on this picture. Um, this is uh, x-axis uh, is current that I take from the transformer. And uh, here this is the output voltage. And uh, basically what is happening is that when I'm increasing the current, uh, I'm uh, increasing the voltage drop and the output voltage is dropping more and more. And uh, if uh, my transformer has a different per unit voltage, and this means that uh, the voltage here will drop either quickly, quickly or slowly, and uh, then at some load uh, we may have uh, currents flowing between the transformers. So again in the labs uh, you will measure how this voltage is dropping uh, for some selected transformers and only when uh, the per unit voltage of my transformer uh, is the same for both transformers I can connect them in parallel. 
It's also visible uh, in the equations. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's uh, see here. Uh, so here we have the per unit voltage that you will get from the lab experiment. And uh, you can see here that this corresponds to a ratio of voltages. This V1N is the nominal voltage and V1K is the short circuit voltage. And if this ratio is different for different transformer, uh, it will behave differently in a circuit and uh, I cannot connect the two transformers together. Uh, so uh, let's take a look on uh, uh, at least two uh, special kinds of transformers. Uh, those transformers are used in uh, special applications and uh, you will see and use them also in the lab experiments. Uh, the first one is uh, called an auto transformer. The auto transformer is uh, used uh, to adjust the voltage that you require. So in our labs uh, we will use it to uh, produce a variable voltage. Now uh, there is a one uh, very large problem with an auto transformer and that's uh, that the auto transformer provides a direct galvanic connection between the power supply here the power network and your load so uh, it cannot be used as a safety device there is no insulation between those two circuits and uh, this is one of let's say bigger problems of the auto transformer uh, how is it working? Here, uh, the V1 voltage, that is my primary voltage, uh, typically connected to the power network. So this would be 230 volts AC. And uh, the output voltage is uh, V2, and that's the voltage that I want to create. Now the auto transformer allows you to change the output voltage so you are moving the slider here up and down and uh, this changes the voltage transfer ratio. Uh, you can see here an example of such a voltage transformer so you're turning this knob and uh, there is a slider connected to this winding that you have on the transformer and uh, it is uh, changing the ratio between the primary and secondary number of turns. Uh, in this uh, picture, you can see the construction of such a, a vo vo auto transformer. Uh, so uh, this part, uh, that this part that's shown here, this is the winding. Uh, in most cases, uh, this is a toroidal core, so it's a toroidal transformer. And then here on top, uh, well hidden behind this, there is a slider that is slides on uh, this winding where the insulation is removed. And then you have here the terminals uh, where you can connect uh, your load. Uh, so the auto transformer is used to change the load, uh, but the voltage uh, that you connect to the load here on V2. And uh, in the labs uh, we will use it a lot to adjust the voltage. Uh, by the way, we will be using an auto transformer also uh, to provide uh, a variable voltage that we will need uh, for the short circuit experiment. So if I go back a little bit uh, for the short circuit experiment here, then this is uh, the voltage coming from the auto transformer. And uh, here, this will allow you to vary the voltage. So this is uh, an auto transformer in uh, this short circuit test. So this is the first uh, specialized uh, type of auto transformer. Uh, now the second type that uh, you will use a lot in the labs is uh, so-called current transformer. It is also called a measuring transformer. And this transformer is used uh, to measure the current in a circuit and uh, it is providing us uh, galvanic insulation. And uh, it is used especially in high voltage circuits uh, where you don't have a direct connection uh, to the high voltage side but you still want to measure current. Uh, the principle is uh, shown here in this picture. Uh, this is a conductor where I want to measure the current 
and uh, this current is creating a magnetic field and we want to pick the magnetic field so here we place uh, magnetic material around it and uh, here this is a uh, secondary winding so this is a kind of transformer where we typically have only one turn here on the primary winding or we can have more but uh, typically just one and here we have multiple co turns on the secondary winding and here uh, we will have a current in the secondary winding and we measure this current in uh, with an ampermeter. Now note that uh, in order to make it work now uh, this uh, ampermeter is uh, connecting those two terminals together so this is always working in short circuit it should not work in a open mode so this is always a short circuit connection and uh, we can calculate what is the ratio between the primary current IP and uh, the secondary current IS that's uh, over here uh, this ratio is typically given uh, directly on the transformer uh, so uh, we will see something like uh, 1 to 10,000 or 1 to 1,000 and we can even change it. So this allows us to change the, the ratio and uh, change the current that we actually measure. Uh, now there is only magnetic coupling, so it's not electrically connected together. So uh, it's galvanically insulated, so this could be... A high voltage circuit. I have a few examples on the next picture. So this primary current can be in the high voltage circuit and this is then safe because here we have a very low voltage and we have uh, some current that we directly measure. Uh, here on this picture you see such an example of a current transformer. Now in this opening that's uh, here in the middle that's where the wire is going so that will be the wire over there and uh, here you just uh, slide through the wire so you don't need to disconnect it you ju it's just going through and uh, here those two terminals are the secondary side so here you will connect your ampere meter so it's a safe device it allows you to measure with high voltages you don't need to remove any insulation uh, you just uh, connect the ampere meter in here and eventually you may also change the current range. Uh, now here are a few examples uh, where you might find uh, current and voltage transformers as well. Uh, those examples are from um, high voltage power distribution. So those are high voltage lines, uh, three phase you see uh, the same in here. And uh, this is a current measuring transformer. So uh, from here you have a low uh, voltage and uh, current metering capabilities and uh, here uh, you have transformers that allow you to measure voltage eventually if you if you need that okay uh, let me end uh, with some examples of a real transformer or how is it made uh, so uh, here you see the construction of a large transformer uh, probably some tens of megavolt amperes. Um, this looks like the core of the transformer. Uh, here is uh, an example and a cutaway view of a large liquid filled transformer. As I said, uh, the transformer is uh, cooled down by oil. So that's the liquid in here. Uh, here uh, we have the transformer itself. Uh, and uh, here we have uh, the cooling and leakage detection system uh, for the oil. So this is a large uh, distribution transformer and then uh, it's powered by three-phase power network. It's stepping up or stepping down the voltage and uh, it's providing uh, services for the power network. Uh, another example is shown here in this picture. So again, this is a power distribution transformer. Uh, three phase you can see here this is the primary side where it will be connected to the power network to high voltage and here this is the secondary side where it will be connected to lower voltages uh, that might lead directly to uh, to homes or to some factories uh, 
Last example, uh, a small transformer uh, for home appliances. Uh, so this will have uh, quite low efficiency compared to the others. And uh, here uh, you can see, again, this is a primary winding here. Uh, this is a single phase transformer. Uh, this was a three phase transformer. So uh, here we can see just a single phase input. Uh, and the output here, uh, it looks like uh, it has two windings uh, where this one is the common wire and here uh, we will have uh, two voltages available or in some cases it's uh, used uh, for a rectifier to produce positive and negative voltages. For example, if we need that in the circuit. Uh, here we see an example of uh, the Torvalo transformer. Now, Torvalo transformers are used um, in special applications uh, such as audio applications uh, where you might need uh, a lower noise and lower stray magnetic flux. Uh, uh, here are two examples. So this is the winding and the core has a form of a toroid. And uh, here is the winding uh, that is wound around the core. So it's going like this. And uh, it, one of the, the winding might be the primary winding, one of, might be the secondary winding. Uh, the biggest advantage of Torail transformers is that compared to normal ones, uh, they have smaller stray magnetic fluxes. Uh, so they radiate less uh, the magnetic energy around them. On the other hand, they are more expensive because uh, they are using different materials for the core. The core is uh, typically made from powder iron compared to normal silicon steel. And uh, the second difference is that uh, you need a special winding machine to create uh, this kind of shape. So uh, the winding needs to go like this inside and outside. And uh, the, the transformer is usually more expensive than a normal transformer. So this is used uh, in some applications where you want to use uh, uh, the better properties of toroidal transformers but due to cost reasons uh, it's not used everywhere okay uh, so uh, let me uh, show you one more video uh, give me a few seconds to to uh, find it uh, this video will be about how to pr how a large transformer is produced uh, so i will unshare for the moment my screen and uh, I will look for the video and uh, I will start the video. So give me a few seconds. Uh, this is a quite old video uh, that uh, was made by a Czech, uh, I don't know, some, some educational company, I think. And uh, the comments are in Czech. So I will... Uh, disable the sound of this uh, video and uh, I will uh, I will show you I will explain you what they are doing in uh, the video so uh, let's just see uh -huh. I have to find the video first I don't know where I put that so give me a minute I just need to find it and then I'll be ready. Okay, so I'm looking for the video. Aha, uh -huh, I did not, I did not upload the video. Oh, I, no, I, I unfortunately I was not able to find the video. Uh, I have only a video for induction motors. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, so I will search for a similar video on uh, YouTube and uh, I'll let you know uh, what is uh, where you can find it. Uh, at the end, uh, we will make uh, the Moodle test. Uh, so uh, let's uh, just... Uh, uh, start the session and uh, now uh, you have few um, seconds minutes maybe 
so that and, uh, and then I will start it. Uh, as usual, uh, there will be uh, more questions, well, four questions uh, related to the lecture. Mm, so uh, now we have some time to get in and uh, then uh, I will start the quiz and I will again unshare my screen and uh, I will uh, comment the, your answers. Uh, in the meantime, if you have some questions, then uh, you can type it in the chat window and uh, I will try to answer your questions. So uh, let me know if you're ready in the chat window. If you're not ready, then please type no in the chat window. So uh, I see that uh, one no answer in chat. So I guess that you are ready for the quiz. So uh, uh, let me uh, start it and uh, let me stop uh, the sharing of the screen. So the first question should now appear to you a few seconds. And uh, so you see that uh, you have more options uh, how to answer it. Okay, so uh, I'm sharing my screen again and the question was uh, what is the purpose of core laminations in a transformer? Uh, obviously it is to decrease uh, the eddy current losses. Uh, the jaw losses are not influenced by laminations. If you want to uh, decrease the losses in the winding you need to use a material with better conductivity. So instead of copper, you would need to do something else. So here the correct answer is uh, to decrease eddy current losses. Uh, let me send the next question. And uh, it should appear uh, in a few seconds. Okay, so let me share the screen again. Uh, so uh, a typical toroidal core transformer has a smaller leakage flux as compared to a normal EI sheet transformer. That's the reason why we use it. On the other hand, uh, it's more expensive because it's more difficult to produce it and it's using different materials. So again, I see that most of you have, tried, have answered correctly. So, question three. Well, it should appear in a few seconds.
So now this is related to the uh, equivalent circuit diagram that we've discussed. Okay, so uh, let's see. Aha, uh, uh -huh, I see. Uh, so the short circuit test in a transformer ser serves us to, to get the jaw losses. So the parts of the losses that are actually dependent on the transformer load. Uh, this uh, is uh, the iron losses that's uh, done with the, the no load test. So the correct answer is this one. Uh, the jowl losses. And uh, the last question should appear in a few seconds. Now this uh, question has uh, multiple possible answers. So uh, check only the ones you think they apply. Uh, if you check all of them, then the sum of the points is zero. This is related to the parallel work of transformers that uh, we have discussed today. Okay, so let me share uh, the screen again. Uh, so now the question was, uh, when we have several transformers that should work together in parallel connection, uh, what conditions uh, do we need to fulfill? Uh, so one condition is that we need the same per unit voltage. Uh, the second condition is that uh, the transformers need to have the same input and output voltage. And uh, the third condition is that uh, they need to have uh, the same phase on the output voltage. Uh, there is no reason why they should have the same efficiency. Uh, there is no reason why the primary side had, had to be connected in star. Uh, number of turns the same, construction is not related, and auto transformer, that's uh, not, not uh, an issue as well. So here the three correct answers are same input output voltage, output voltage with the same phase and same per unit voltage. So I see that uh, this was the most troublesome question. Uh, so now this session is closed. Uh, you should be able to see your number of points. Uh, 